Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 5 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss views in an MVC application. Please watch part 4 before proceeding with this video. Now let's say using our MVC web application, I want to display the list of countries as you can see on the slide here. Let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So at the moment, if you look at this index action method within the home controller class, it's actually returning a string. Now if you look at the list of country names, they're nothing but list of strings. So let's change the return type of this function to list of string. Okay, and then to display the list of countries, I don't need these two parameters. So let me get rid of them. And then since the return type of this action method is list of string, let's actually return a new list of string. And then we actually want to return a list of countries back. So let's hard code some countries here. In reality, we may retrieve them by interacting with a WCF service or by retrieving them from a database table, etc. Okay, but for now, you know, to understand views, let's actually hard code the names of countries within this, uh, you know, new list of string object. So let's say for example I want to return India as one of the country and then US, UK and Canada. Alright, so now let's go ahead and run this and one more thing we don't need this uh, get details action method so let's get rid of that and let's go ahead and run this application and see what's going to happen. What do we expect? We expect the list of countries to be displayed like this on the form once it renders but let's see what's going to happen look at this instead of rendering the list of countries it actually is printing the name of the type okay so if you look at what is the return type of this function it's list of string but look at the intellisense list of string class it's actually present in system.collections.generic namespace and that's what is printed on this form right here Okay, so to correct this error, I mean to correct this, we could, it's not an error, but it's actually in, incorrectly printing the type name instead of looping through each country and then printing those country names. Okay, so to fix this, we can actually add a view. So what are views in model view controller? The purpose of a view is to render the data, you know, is to format the data in the way we want and present it to the end user. So we give view some data and then in the view itself, we specify how we want to format it. Do you want to bold it, underline it, or you want to present it using a table, using an unordered list or a bulleted list, etc. You know, that's what is the job of the view, to format the data and then present it to the end user. So we give, we are going to give this data, you know, the list of strings to a view, and that view is going to determine how to format that and how to present it to the end user. Okay, so we want to return a view from this uh, controller action method and to return a view first we need to add a view to this project and to do that right click anywhere on this function and then select add view and look at the add view dialog box look at the name of the view it's index okay the name of the view is matching the name of the controller action method here and then we're going to make use of razor view engine so let's select razor as the view engine and then leave the rest of the defaults. We'll discuss strongly typed views in a later video session in a very great detail. Okay, but actually before I click add, let me cancel out of this and let's look at Solution Explorer. You know, look at this views folder. At the moment, it doesn't have any other files and folders except for web.config file. We'll discuss the purpose of this web.config file in a later video session. Now, let me go ahead and add a view. So add view, I'm going to you know leave the defaults there and click add so this should add a view with name index.cshtml to our solution I mean to our project let's see where it has added look at this within the views folder I've got another folder here home and within that home folder index.cshtml is present so why did this add this home folder because if you look at the name of the controller it's home controller and this home controller can have several action methods Okay, so all the views that are related to this home controller will now reside within this home folder of this views folder. Okay, all right. So for our index action method within the home controller to be able to return a view, there are some changes that we need to do. First, we need to change the return type of this function. So 
since we want this controller action method to return a view, I'm going to change the return type of this function to action result. And then ultimately what we want to do from this function, I want to return a view. So I'm going to say return view. Okay, so which view is this function going to return? Since here, look at the name of the uh, controller action method, it's index. And where is this index action method present within home controller? Okay, so MVC uses some conventions by default. So because of those conventions, what it's going to do, it's actually going to look within the views folder for views. And then the name of the controller is home. So it's going to find for home controller. And then within the home controller, it checks, okay, is there a view with name index.cshtml? If it's present there, it's going to pull that out from there and then render that. Okay, all right. So that's what this return view is going to return. It's going to return this view. And then look at what we want to do with that view. We actually want to display the list of countries like this. Okay, so where do we store this list of countries? So obviously, from this controller action method, we need to pass these list of countries to this view. Okay, so how do I pass data from a controller to a view? Okay, there are several ways we can do it. We can either use something called view data, view bag, or we can use view models. In this video, we'll see how to use view data. Okay, so instead of returning this list back, because I cannot do that now, because the return type of this function is action result, which is going to return a view there. Okay, now you may be wondering, okay, this view, if I hover my mouse over here, look at what's the return type of view. It's actually view result, but the return type of this controller action method is action result. So how am I able to return a view result when the return type is action result? That's because if I right click on this view, go to definition, so it's view result, but then when I right click on view result, go to definition, it inherits from view result base. When I right click on that and go to definition, look at that. Ultimately, a view inherits from action result. Okay, so that's the reason why I'm able to return a view in spite of this return type being action result. Okay, now why is this there? Why are we using a super type? Why can't I just say, you know, view result as the return type? We can do, but remember, a controller action method can do more than just returning a view. It can return to another controller, controller action method, or it can return a JSON result. It can do, you know, several things. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a later video session. Okay, but for now, if you ask me, can't I make the return type of this function view result absolutely you can do that as well so if i make this view result for example it's still going to work why because i'm just returning a view and a view is going to return a view result back they match so no problem all right but then before we return a view you know as as from this controller action method we need to store this list of countries somewhere so that the view can pull them out and then print them so where am i going to store them I'm going to use something called a view bag object for this. So there's something called view bag. So I'm going to make use of that object. And then here, look at this. I can use some dynamic properties on this. I can give, a, I mean, any meaningful name. For example, these are list of countries. So I'm going to use a property on this, a dynamic property, countries. And into that, I'm going to store this new list of string. Okay. So this property is dynamic property. You can use countries or you can give it any meaningful name that, that makes more sense. Okay, so what are we doing in this controller action method? We are storing this list of countries within this property of this view object, and then we are returning a view. And which view is this going to return? This is going to return this index.cshtml. So within this view, now what we need to do? We need to retrieve those countries out of that view bag object and then display them to the user using an unordered list. Okay, so let's change the uh, code in index.cshtml. First of all, you know, we want to have the title as countries list. So let's change that to countries list. And then let's have the same title for the page. Okay, now if I want to print an unordered list like this, we use nhtml unordered list. So I'm going to make use of unordered list. 
and then each country should be displayed as a bullet item so within an unordered list we will have a list item right so now what we need to do we need to loop through so we need to loop through each country but where are these countries stored there are they are stored in this country's uh, dynamic property of this view bag object so retrieve those countries so what I'm gonna do here is for each look at that now I have some HTML here but I also need to write some C sharp code so how do I switch between C sharp and HTML I use the symbol at in razor okay so now when I type for each look at that I get IntelliSense as well for each string str let's call this variable country in where are our list of countries present it's present in view bag object and what is the property that we have used to store those countries its countries property so let's copy the property and what we want to do so for each country we are looping through and then basically we want to display this country inside a list item so I'm going to put it there that's it let's go ahead and run this and see what's the output that we get so what do we expect we expect the list of countries to be displayed using an unordered list like this and let's see what's gonna happen so it's still rendering look at that instead of printing the name of the country it's actually printing the name of the variable and that's understandable because you know razor thinks that okay this is HTML we started HTML and it thinks this word is something that the end user want to print just like that but no it's actually a variable which which is this one which contains the name of a country so to to convey our intention that it's a variable all you need to do is specify the at symbol there so now it's going to treat that as a variable and whatever value that's present in that variable is going to be retrieved and then printed in between that opening and closing tag of list item and we have the output as expected all right so what did we do we added this controller action method you know we are storing the list of countries in that country's property of the view bag object and then we are returning a view which is going to return this index.cshtml view and within that view what are you do, doing we are looping through each country and then printing them so we are using razor views here all right and that's what is the uh, picture is doing here look at that this is the action method that gets invoked and this returns this view this view pulls data out of this country's you know view bag object and then prints them and this is the output so view bag and view data for the moment you know we're going to discuss more uh, you know about these in our next video session for now understand both of them as a mechanism to pass data from a controller to a view but remember to pass data from a controller to a view it's always a good practice to use strongly typed view models we'll discuss more uh, about view models in a later video session now we use at symbol to switch between you know C sharp code and HTML all right on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day